working to keep alive a legacy of those before us. Through the groups we join and expectations we want to rise above, made possible by those who executed a vision. So let's keep the dream alive and continue to rise from our roots. Hello everyone and welcome to Rising From Our Roots. Today we look into the roots of jazz music. This is a genre of music that originated in the United States. However, during the 1920s, it wasn't initially accepted because of its African roots and some people claimed that this new style of music made young people more susceptible to immoral behavior. But despite the backlash, jazz music continued to grow in popularity, brought young people together, and is enjoyed by people internationally. Here on Truman's campus, we have three different jazz ensembles that students can be a part of, but first, let's take a look back at how it all started. Jazz music. From bebop to blues, ragtime or swing, it is a genre of music that is enjoyed by people all over the world. New Orleans is said to be the birthplace of jazz, but dating back to the 1800s, jazz music was heavily influenced by African musical traditions and rhythmic patterns, along with black spirituals and hymns. Music was one of the only ways slaves were able to uphold their African traditions after being forcibly removed from their homes and sold in the United States. The peak of jazz music began in the Roaring Twenties, which is also known as the Jazz Age. Initially, it was not accepted by many people of the older generation, and some went far as calling it devil's music. People claimed jazz music had a negative influence over young people, and it was not uncommon to come across communities in the U.S. that prohibited jazz music in dance halls. However, today, jazz music is considered by some a cultural phenomenon. It allows musicians to break the rules, express their own creative musical abilities, and with its success, it has become a meaningful part of American history. Here on Truman's campus, we have three different jazz ensembles, and I had a chance to interview drummer Ben Barker, who is a jazz musician and also a music ed major. Thank you so much for coming on the show with me today. No problem at all. <laughs> so why don't you first start off by introducing yourself? Um, as she said, I'm Ben Barker and I am a junior music education major um, and I'm getting a jazz minor as well. How did you originally become interested in jazz music? My older brother Christopher, oldest brother Christopher, was uh, in the jazz program at my high school and uh, so I got dragged along to all of the all of the uh, high school jazz band competitions and all of their concerts and everything like that. And then my dad also just listened, just listened and does still listen to jazz all, all the time. So I was just kind of immersed in it my whole life. So How long have you been playing the drums? Um, I got my first drum set when I was in third grade. And then my brother Jacob got his first drum set when I was in fifth grade. And then I kind of stole it from him. And, practiced on it more than he did and got a lot better than him so <laughs> do you play any other instruments um well because i'm a music ed major i've had to learn how to play a bunch of other instruments um but i, I can't really play any other ones um i'm a percussion major so we have to learn how to play every percussion instrument marimba xylophone vibraphone timpani all of them um uh, but drum set is where i like to concentrate my efforts here at Truman, we have three different jazz combos. So mm -hmm. which ones are you a part of? Um, so we have three different combos here. Um, they all meet at different times. I'm only a part of one of them. Um, and we just had a concert, and we just had Jazz Fest recently. Um, and yeah, so we, we do a lot of that. And then we also have jazz ensembles, big bands. Um, I am in the jazz ensemble. We have ensemble and lab band. Um, and uh, ensemble does a tour every year. Um, and it's kind of the premier jazz group of the of German State. So okay, yeah. do you have a favorite out of any of those? I would say combo would be my favorite between big band and combo music because um, when you're playing big band, you kind of have to play mostly what's written. There's more written music um, for the drummer, 
there's actually a drum set part. Whereas in combo, you get a lead sheet with the melody, and that's it. And so you have to figure out what part of the melody you want to accentuate. You have to figure out how you want to do it. And then you also have to be able to follow along with the solos, even though they're doing something weird and different. Um, so it's, it's, more, it's more creative. You can be more creative with it, I think. So when it comes to jazz music, do you prefer being able to be a little bit more creative and have that type of freedom? Definitely, for sure. That's, that's probably one of the biggest reasons that I got into jazz so much is because of all of the creative freedom that you can have with it. Somebody can play a tune, say somebody who wants to play well you needn't, or they can play it this way and then I can play it a completely other way. Or I can play it two different ways in the same day. Right. It's, it's great. It's, it's so good. So being a music ed major, um, how many hours a week would you say that you dedicate towards practicing? Um, towards practicing in general, um, like actually on an instrument, um, I usually do marimba probably uh, three to four hours a week. Not nearly enough, but it's there. And then uh, drum set, depending on the week of the day, um, I can go between three and five hours of actually playing in an ensemble a week and then uh, and maybe an hour a day outside of that actually just practicing on my own behind this kit with nobody else developing things so wow. yeah it's a lot of time <laughs> i think um well for me personally um not being a music major i didn't realize like how many hours a week that you guys put in towards practicing and everything mm -hmm. so what makes it worth it to actually put in that dedication I would say definitely the end product. Um, being able to put something out there that makes people happy or makes people appreciate something. Um, like, for instance, this past weekend at Jazz Fest, we went and we did a critique and the, the guest artist that was there critiquing us was so impressed that he didn't even have anything to say about one of our songs. Like, that's, that's so cool to like, to be able to have that affirmation of you guys are doing something right you know it's really it's really cool really rewarding it makes all of it worth it so okay so you are a music major and you're minoring in jazz mm -hmm. so what do you want to do in the long run when it comes to your major and minor eventually i want to teach high school kids um not just be a band director because that's just too general like i don't feel like i can really make a huge difference just instructing an entire concert band um, but I would rather concentrate on on jazz like be the jazz guy at whatever high school or be the percussion guy at whatever high school um, that would be really that would be the tops for, for me okay and then um, by doing that what kind of difference do you want to make by teaching jazz music to kids I guess I just want to like expose younger kids to it because Nowadays, people think, oh, jazz, it's grandpa's music. It's, you know, sit back and spang, bang, a lang, spang, a this is really boring. But it can be really, really cool and really upbeat, really exciting, and really, like, catchy, like, just like every pop tune now. And I just want to expose people to that and get younger people to appreciate it the same way that I do. Right. So do you think that for people who may not play an instrument or might not be necessarily musically inclined, do you think that jazz music is still something that they could enjoy at least listening to? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, unlike uh, a lot of like concert band and orchestra music type stuff where it's more academically focused and you kind of have to be learned to know about it and really appreciate it. Um, Jazz is more about relaying a feeling, um, whatever feelings that group or artist is is trying to portray. It's that's all it is. It's just trying to portray whatever feeling, and anybody can feel feelings. So, um, I I definitely think anybody can appreciate it. Anybody can can l enjoy listening to it. So, how would you personally define jazz music? Well. I think that the definition of jazz uh, differs from person to person. Um, because jazz music is such a personal thing, you're 
improvising, so you're putting a lot of your personal personal feelings out there, whether you're trying to or not. Um, it's very personal on what it means to each person. Um, to me, it's about conveying feelings to a certain extent, displaying skill, all of that stuff. But really, it's just if you like it and it's it's cool, it's there and it's awesome. So, who are some of your favorite jazz musicians? From nowadays, um, I guess you can kind of group jazz musicians in with a little bit more of a jazz fusion group, because um, it's kind of hard to find really just solely jazz musicians um, that don't do other things. Like you have a lot of people who play jazz, but they also play whatever they need to to get paid. Right. <laughs> um, but now I would say uh, Carl Allen is a drummer from uh, New York. He teaches at Juilliard. Um, he's really good. I listen to him a lot. Uh, uh, Joshua Redman is a uh, sax player. He plays sax and he's doing stuff in Colorado with actually he, our guest artist that just came for uh, Jazz Fest. Uh, plays with Joshua Redman a lot um, and the stuff that he puts out is killer. Um, it, it definitely falls more into the jazz fusion bit but um, there's a vocalist named Erica Badu who does really cool stuff straight up jazz and uh, she also mixes in with some fusion stuff she does she's done stuff with Robert Glasper and um, a little bit more out there kind of music um, Layla Hathaway is another vocalist who's doing a lot of really cool stuff. She's done stuff with Snarky Puppy and cool, really cool stuff. Um, and then as far as the past, I guess I kind of look at the greats, you know, Miles Davis, uh, Louis Armstrong. Um, and then as far as drummers go, you can get down really nitty gritty as drummers. Um, Max Roach is a really good drummer who I try to pull from a lot. Uh, Papa Joe Jones. Baby Dodds, Art Blakey, he's, Art Blakey kind of revolution, like took, took jazz drumming from one step and he just kind of, we're up here now, it was really, he does, he does a lot of cool stuff, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you see yourself maybe making music like these artists in the future or do you solely want to focus on, um, teaching? Um, well, I hope that I can make music. Um, composing is a whole another whole another ball game, other than playing. But I hope that I can keep playing. Um, not necessarily professionally. Like I don't really want to strive to become a household name and like, oh, that drummer Ben Barker, he's so cool. Nah, that would be kind of cool. But then, eh, I don't really know if there's a much of a pull. Um, but teaching is what I I think I really just want to teach. Like really just want to get other people to become those greats. That'd be cool. So when it comes to being a real jazz musician, do you think it matters if an artist is even mainstream and really popular in that aspect? Um, some people have made the argument that a musician like Kenny G, he's not a real jazz musician or maybe it's too commercial sounding. So do you think it matters in that aspect when it comes to jazz music? No, but to a certain extent, like psychologically it does. Um, but like if you look at Kenny G, for example, yeah, he's kind of a sellout, but he could still play a soprano sax better than most people, you know? Um, like if you brought him in here into this combo room with one of our student combos, he'd kick the socks off of anybody who's in here except for maybe Mr. Ab Mr. Abishan. So, I mean, yeah, they they don't play up to their potential, I guess. You could you could make you could make that argument, but I mean, I think that most people like that are still just as if not more skilled than a lot of other jazz musicians. Okay. So, so why do you think jazz music isn't as popular as it once was? Um, I think you can pretty well pretty much pin it on the lack of dance halls, really. Because jazz music, I mean, yeah, it got its start, kind of just happened, right? People were playing the blues. But then, once dance halls started happening, like, the dancers would go on until 
2, 3 a.m. And then after that, all the musicians would be like, oh, thank God they left. I don't have to play slow so that they can dance to it anymore. And then they'd go to some random jam till 7 a.m. and play ridiculously fast and evolve the music. Um, but since dancing isn't really a thing anymore, you don't have the people getting together and playing in that, in that, uh, in that venue. And then that kind of decreases the mainstream popularity of it and kind of puts it more into a niche of, of jazz musicians and educated people who can be like, oh, that was very cool. He did this and the, uh, so, yeah. Do you think that jazz music will ever be popular as it once was? I think it'll get as popular, but I don't think it will be the same kind of jazz music. Um, like, I don't ever expect Duke Ellington, even though this would be awesome, I don't ever expect him to be back on the top 50. That'd be weird. <laughs> but in the future, I definitely expect jazz musicians to kind of come into their own and really sell more because you get you get people a group like snarky puppy who has all of these different amazing musicians collaborating and making this amazing music and it's jazz like it's jazz fusion technically i guess is what you would have to call it but it still has its roots in jazz all of the solos that they take you can analyze in a we're using jazz theory and because it's more familiar and more gro groovy nowadays to, to nowadays listeners, um, it definitely has the possibility to get more popularity, mainstream popularity. Okay. And you said that, um, you know, maybe in the next 10 years, Duke Ellington might not be in the top <laughs> 50, but where do you want to see music in the next 10 years when it comes to jazz? I would like it if people listened to more things like Snarky Puppy, where it's more musically literate. Oh, that's probably mean to say. But it, it's still kind of there. You know, like pop music now, you've probably seen all the videos where like every song is the same four chords. Blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, that's the formula to a pop song. But I would like to see something like more intricate be popular because you can make something that's more intricate theoretically and still have it groove and still have it be just as catchy it's just not as playable as everything else right. so yeah <laughs> do you think that you're possibly doing that now with the bands that you're a part of at truman um big band probably not so much combo because it's more of an intimate setting you can you can change anything that you want and you can you can do whatever. Um, like uh, Bon Iver has this song called Wood, and my combo is trying to transcribe that right now and make it fit into a five-piece jazz combo. And if you've ever heard that song, it's very not five-piece jazz combo-y. He records himself singing a bunch of different tracks that, and makes it like this eight-part harmony weird really cool really cool piece but we're trying to narrow it down and then put it out through a trumpet a saxophone piano bass and drums what do you personally love the most about playing jazz music um i would say that i like the uh personal aspect of it um how you can do whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, like I was saying before, I can play the same tune completely differently back to back. Um, like, if you really wanted to and try to, to try an experiment, you could take one tune, you can play an entire set, you can play a really fast swing, you can play a Latin, and you can play a ballad, and the, all of the same tune, if you wanted to. That'd be really dumb and kind of stupid, but it just kind of goes to display how how you can change everything like nothing is set in stone it's it's, it's really cool you, you can even change on the fly you can plan to do one thing and then you're on the performance whatever you're doing and it's like oh hey we didn't do that okay whatever and then it just keeps going my final question for you is um why do you think it's important to continue keeping jazz music alive um 
I feel like it's important because everybody can connect to jazz. Um, even if you don't really feel like you do, if you listen to jazz in, just in the correct setting, then anybody can connect and it can be different from everybody. Like, I, two people can be listening to the same song and come hear completely different things. Um, just because of where their focus is or what they're, what's going on in their life or whatever. And I just think that that's really cool how you can play songs infinitely different ways and you can also hear it completely different every time. Even though, even if you play it the same way, every time you can hear it completely different. Just, be, just depending on what you're doing. Um, and I really would like to see it get more into the education, more into like general music education, because um, it jazz is like a language, really. Um, when you're playing jazz, they actually did. There's actually a study that they uh, hooked a bunch of jazz musicians up to like brain scanners and stuff, and had them. They did brain scans just doing everyday things, having conversations and everything. Then they were doing brain scans while they were playing. And the same parts of your brain fire when you're playing jazz as they do when you're communicating. So if I were to go play drum set right now, my brain would be working the same way as me talking to you right now. It's really, really interesting. And it's just, it's a, it's a language. I say something through whatever instrument I'm doing, and the rest of the group responds to it. It's, it's really cool. It's really cool. Well, um, Ben, I definitely appreciate you coming on. Um, I personally really like to listen to jazz music, so maybe those who don't and they watch this, maybe they'll start taking maybe at least a little bit of an interest in yeah, it. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning into Rising From Our Roots. Music is an important part of our culture, and with jazz music, it affects other genres and even plays a significant part in American history. Although it isn't as popular as it once was, like drummer Ben Barker, it goes to show how some musicians are continuing to keep jazz music alive. Thank you all so much for tuning into this week's episode. And like always, never forget to keep your dreams alive by continuing to rise from your roots. <laughs>